I came across this interesting geometry question. We have a big circle with a radius 10. And inside that big circle, sort of sandwiched in between two of the radii of the bigger circle, we have a smaller circle with a radius that we don't know. And the question is simply, what is the radius of the smaller circle? When starting a geometry question like this, it can be a bit intimidating to know where to start. So to help us off, I've got some geometry problem solving tips we can use. So step one says, draw a huge picture and label everything. So we already have a big picture here, but if you didn't and you just had the question, I really encourage you to get drawing as big a diagram as you can to represent the problem. Step two is draw lines connecting important points. So by important points, I mean points that stand out as being a bit significant, possibly the centers of circles, or maybe where lines intersect. Let's give that a go now. So this is the center of a circle, as is this one. So let's connect them to each other. This is a point here where lines intersect. We have the edge of the circle intersecting with the radius. So it makes sense to me to draw on this line. So actually, let me label that straight away with R. So this line I've just drawn here is another radius of this smaller circle. Likewise, this line here might be good to draw on. This is again another radius of this circle. What other lines could we draw? Well, I guess another point of intersection is this point here. So why don't we draw in a line connecting the centre to that point too? So this circle centre is now pretty well connected. What about this circle centre? So we've also got the centre of this bigger circle to think about. Are there any other lines we can draw on connecting this centre? We've already got this one. But what stands up to me actually is we should consider other radii that we could draw on. And so in particular, while we have got some lines drawn on here, we should note that if I draw a line connecting this center to this intersection point over here, that would give us another radius of 10. So I've drawn on lots of lines. I might not need all of them. I might not need any of them. I don't know at this point, but what it's good to do is just to get stuck in and start drawing on things that might trigger off some ideas. Our next point here, so we've drawn lots of lines. There's a note saying, can you make right angle triangles? So we've got some angles that look a bit right angly. Are they right angles? Well, I think there's a circle theorem that says something like, if you have a radius of a circle and it meets the tangent of the circle at that point, then that point is at a right angle. So I can confidently say that these are right angles here. And again, here we have another radius meeting the tangent to the circle. So again, right angles here and here. And we sort of have what looks like a square here, having two sides of this sort of quadrilateral being the same length, as well as this many right angles. I'm confident that we can say this is a square. And that's exciting because we can put on a right angle here, but also every side of a square is the same length. So that means that this length here is also R, this section here, this is the same as this length and the same over here as well. So that's quite nice. It's good to label literally anything we can, whether or not we think it's helpful or not. Okay, so now what do we do? We want to find what R is. And one of the ways we can do that is by trying to set up some sort of equation that involves R. A really good way to do that as a first sort of port of call is to try use Pythagoras' theorem. So let me bring on my friend Pythagoras to watch over us. So Pythagoras' theorem says that if you know two sides of a right angle triangle, then you can calculate the third. Said slightly differently, it means that we can set up an equation that we know to be true using three sides of a right angle triangle. So what's jumping straight up to me here? Well, we've got several options for right angle triangles, but now given our observation about this square, we have a triangle here that has two sides that we know. We know this side is length r, this side is length r. What about this longer side? Just by looking at what we've labelled, can you see how we can express this hypotenuse of this right angle triangle? Take a moment to see if you can think what that is. We've labelled on this radius here of the big circle and that's 10, so we know this length. And we know this length, because this is a radius of the small circle. So we have 10 minus r equals this length. So this length is 10 minus r. So this is really exciting because we actually know three sides of this triangle in terms of r. 
And because it's a right angle triangle, we can use Pythagoras' theorem to write an equation down that connects all of these sides and that we will then be able to use to solve R. So Pythagoras says that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where A and B are the smaller sides of the triangle and C is the longest side. So in our case, we have R squared plus R squared equals 10 minus R all squared. So we've written down an equation that just has the one unknown in R. So I'm hopeful that we can solve this and find out what R is. Let's simplify it a bit. So on this side, we have 2R squared. And on this side, well, we have a set of brackets squared, which remember is the same as being like 10 minus R times 10 minus R. And you can do the sort of multiplication where you make sure everything is timed by everything else. So we would get the 10 times the 10, which would be 100. We'd have the minus r times by minus r, which would give us plus r squared. These two times by each other is minus 10r. Two lots of that is minus 20r. Let's bring everything to one side. Subtracting r squared from each side, we get r squared. And then bringing that over, plus 20r minus the 100 equals 0. Now we have a quadratic equation written in our nice format that we want to solve for r. There are several approaches you could use. We could try and factorise it. If r ends up being an integer, a nice number, then that's a really good route to go down. Having a quick think, I'm struggling to factorise this, so I am going to instead try and complete the square. I think people often jump to using the quadratic formula in situations like this, so you can do that, but let's do some practice at completing the square. We're going to draw a set of brackets, which will be squared. In these brackets, we put our unknown r, we then put half of the term in front of the r, so in here we're going to put half of plus 20, which is plus 10. We then chuck in this final term, which is minus 100, and then we subtract, it's always a subtraction here, the term in the brackets squared, so here the 10 squared, and that all equals 0, so we have r plus 10 squared minus 100, minus 100, 10 squared is 100, so that together would be minus 200 equals 0. Rearranging, r plus 10 squared equals 200, and I think we can solve this, so we have r plus 10 equals plus or minus the square root of 200, so r equals plus or minus the square root of 200 minus 10. So note that we have two solutions that we're going to get up because it's a quadratic equation. We've got a positive and a negative solution here. Because we're in a geometry question and we know the context, we know that r has to be positive because r is a radius, we know that actually we only need the positive solution. So it's a bit different to a normal sort of, if you were just asked to solve the quadratic equation out of the blue, you would want to give two answers. In this case, we know r is positive, so we can just use the one answer. We take the plus here. If you don't have a calculator to hand, I'll show you how you could write this slightly more simply. So with no calculator, we could say, well, we know that r is going to be positive. So r equals the positive square root of 200 minus 10. And we can slightly simplify this. Two things that multiply to get 200 are, say, 50 and 4. So I can write it like this, and I've done that intentionally because 4 is a square number. So I could say it's uh, 2 times the square root of 50 minus 10, and I could just give my answer like that. Or if you have a calculator, we have the square root of 200 minus 10, like that. I'm pressing equals, and if I press this button here, it will give me the decimal version. So I get 4.142 and so on. Say I need to give it to two decimal places, that's going to be 4.14. So there we have our answer. Just from a simple diagram that only had one number labelled on it, we have managed to work out what the radius of that smaller circle was. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more aesthetic, mathy videos, do check out my channel and subscribe.